Welcome to this training video where we will show you how to submit a suspicious and unusual transaction report, also known as a STR on the FIC registration and reporting platform. We will also explain how to report a suspicious and unusual activity report, also known as a SAR. To access the platform, visit www.fic.gov.za. Find the Click Here to Report button on the home page and then log in. Enter your username and password details that you created during registration. Let's look at a typical scenario that we will use in this reporting exercise. Say the accountable or reporting institution, AI or RI, is institution Y and Mr. B is their client. It is also assumed that you, the viewer of this video, are the compliance or reporting officer of institution Y and are responsible for reporting to the FIC. For example, Mr. B makes a purchase from institution Y to the value of 1.3 million rand via EFT. However, Institution Y finds this transaction suspicious as Mr. B has a low income salary and this transaction does not fit his lifestyle. This will be reported as a STR. There is a second report that is equally important to keep in mind called the SAR. You will submit a SAR where a transaction was attempted but has not been concluded. Let's say Ms. C is not a client of Institution Y and wants to make a purchase of 120,000 Rand. But after being asked for her identity or passport number, she refuses to provide it and walks out. No transaction was concluded, but her behavior is suspicious and unusual. This will then be reported as a SAR. Back to our STR example. To report a STR, go to the drop-down menu, New Reports, and select Web Reports. Select which type of report you would like to submit. In this case, select STR. There are a number of fields that are automatically filled in with the details obtained from your initial registration, like the reporting person and location. All the fields marked with an asterisk are mandatory fields and must be completed. The unmarked fields are also important to complete to the best of your knowledge. The information obtained from STR and SAR may or can be used in the fight against crime. In the Reporting Entity Branch field, you will fill in your entity's branch details where the transaction took place. In the Reporting Entity Reference field, you will need to supply your unique internal reference number linked to this report. When the FIC requires more information on this report, it will refer to this internal reference number. This is therefore very important. The FIC reference number will be referred to in cases where a submitted report has failed and needs to be corrected. The reason for reporting and action fields are both compulsory fields. In reason for reporting, you will state why the transaction is deemed unusual or suspicious. It is very important to capture the background information and reason for suspicion in detail. In this example, we will say that Mr. B is a low-income salary earner based on the client's profile. Therefore, the money paid by Mr. B does not match his income or lifestyle. In the action field, you describe the action taken by Institution Y. For example, you will explain the internal steps that you have taken or if you have reported this matter to another law enforcement agency. Your report will be rejected if you do not complete these fields. Your report will also be rejected if you complete these fields with not applicable, NA, unknown, leave the field blank, or only capture a space, numbers, or any other special characters. Also note that all information relating to the transaction must be captured in the transaction section of the STR and not in the reason and action fields. The location field is the address of the reporter. This is automatically filled in. When you have completed these steps, you will move to a mandatory indicators field. Search the list of predetermined indicators and select the most appropriate explanation. For this example, select activity does not match client profile or expected transacting patterns. 
It is important to note that more than one indicator may be selected. Please familiarize yourself with all the options in this list so that the nature of the suspicion may be accurately reported to the FIC. It is good practice to regularly save the information that you have captured while completing the report. Click on the Save Report button to save a draft of the report. A copy of your report can be found under the Drafted Reports menu. Next, you have to click on the Transactions button. Here you will supply more information about the transaction that took place between Mr. B and Institution Y. In the number field, you need to complete the unique transaction number given by Institution Y. This can typically be an invoice number. If you do not have a transaction number, you can generate a unique number from the system by clicking the gear icon. The internal reference number is Institution Y's internal transaction reference number. The transmode code, which is the manner of payment, is very important to fill in correctly. In this case, you need to choose electronic fund transfer. The local amount is the value of the transaction in South African Rand. In this example, 1.3 million Rand. It is very important to capture the transaction amount excluding decimal values. The date field refers to the date when the transaction took place. If applicable, you can add the teller's name and who authorized the transaction. The location field is where the actual transaction took place. Enter the full address, including the postal code. This is of critical importance to the FIC. If you have any further details regarding the transaction, this can be submitted in the description and comment fields. In the from and to type fields, you need to define the source of the funds, which is Mr. B, and the destination of the funds, which is institution Y. Firstly, you will need to choose whether the transaction was made by your client. For example, Mr. B is the client of institution Y. Therefore, in the from type, you will click on the My Client button. The funds code in this example will be electronic fund transfer. The country is where the transaction took place, and in this case, it is South Africa. If the funds were paid in foreign currency, the reporting entity must select the correct currency, the amount paid, and the exchange rate at the time of the transaction. If Mr. B paid the funds on behalf of the company where he is employed, he will be seen as a conductor, and his details will have to be completed. Under party type, there are three options to choose from, which are person, account, or entity. In our example, Mr. B transferred the funds out of his bank account into Institution Y's bank account via EFT. Here you will select account. You can use an existing account if the information was captured and saved in the current Go AML web session. If no information is available, you will have to complete the details of Mr. B's bank account manually. Make sure to complete all the mandatory fields marked with an asterisk. The SWIFT code or institution code of the account holder's financial institution is mandatory. If Mr. B had paid the money in cash at Institution Y, you would select person and complete all the necessary fields. If Mr. B had paid the funds on behalf of an entity at Institution Y's premises, you would select entity and complete all the necessary fields. Now that the source of the funds is defined, you will add the party and save. Next, we have to describe the destination the funds were paid to. In this example, Institution Y is the receiver of the funds and the reporting institution. So you will select My Client. You will now click on the To My Client field and complete the funds code with electronic fund transfer. Under party type, there are, again, three options, which are person, account, and entity. In our example, Institution Y received the funds in its bank account, so account will be selected. Complete all the particulars of Institution Y's account and provide the details of a signatory for the account. You can also select Use an existing account if the information was previously saved. If there are more persons, accounts or entities involved, you can add them.
If you have more information about what Mr. B purchased, you can capture these details under goods and services. For example, did he purchase a vehicle or property from Institution Y? If you don't have any information on goods and services, then you may skip this step. To report a SAR, the transaction field will be replaced with an activity field. Click on Report Parties. In the Significance field, you have to allocate a number between 0 and 9 that describes how involved the subject was in the transaction. In our previous example, Ms. C refused to provide her identity or passport number, so she was heavily involved. A number 9 will be suitable for this scenario. When a subject is mildly involved, a lesser number is appropriate. In the Reason for Reporting field, please describe why Ms. C is reported in the current report. You can provide more information in the Comments field if necessary. Next, you need to define the party type. In this case, Ms. C is a person. As a minimum, the first name and surname or last name of Ms. C are mandatory, but capture as many details as possible about Ms. C, even if the fields are not mandatory. If there are more persons, accounts or entities involved, you can add them. You can also supply more information on goods and services Ms. C was interested in if and where the information is readily available. After completing and saving your STR or SAR, you can attach any documentation such as an ID, driver's license and more. Click on Show Attachments where you can upload it. Once you are done, save your report and remember to review it by selecting the Preview button before you submit. Ensure that you press the Submit Report button to submit the report. If the report is only saved, the FIC will not receive the report and you did not discharge your reporting obligation. Remember, saved reports that are not submitted yet can be found under the Drafted Reports drop-down menu under Not Submitted Web Reports. Remember, you only have 15 days from becoming aware of the suspicion to submit a STR or SAR. Thank you for watching. For more information, visit www.fic.gov.za for the STR and SAR user guides or contact the FIC Compliance Contact Center.